Hello and welcome again. Today I want to speak to you about the Haber process. It's one of the most talked about reactions in the chemistry class. You would have heard about the Haber process for the manufacture of ammonia. And the Haber process happens to be one of the most important reactions in modern day human civilization. It manufactures ammonia, which you might not realize that ammonia is the precursor of making ammonium phosphate and ammonium nitrate and lots of artificial fertilizers which are responsible for feeding the world. So, in studying the Haber process, it's very likely that you've combined the Haber process with your study of this principle, Le Chatelier's principle, to help you explain and to understand what's going to happen in the Haber process if you gave a high temperature. You might be reading in your books and hearing from your teachers that the Haber process is an exothermic reaction. As you can see, a negative delta H of 91.8 kilojoules. Haber process is exothermic, and if you followed Le Chatelier's principle, which states that if a system in equilibrium is subjected to a constraint or a change, the system behaves to change that. And then without too much explanation, you are taught to accept that this, this is an exothermic process, a higher temperature is going to push the equilibrium this way. And because it's an exothermic process, a lower temperature is going to push the equilibrium this way. And the reason for that sometimes is just given to you as because of Le Chatelier's principle. But Le Chatelier's principle is just that. It's a principle. It can be applied in many situations and sometimes it breaks down. In this particular case of temperature, it doesn't do very much to explain why this phenomenon happens. Why is it that an exothermic reaction like the Haber process, the forward reaction, is favored by low temperatures? And then to add to the confusion, if it's favored by low temperatures, then why do we use a temperature of 450 degrees Celsius? in the industrial manufacture of ammonia. And the reason given for that is because the rate of the reaction is going to be too slow. So that is very much correct. The rate of the reaction is going to be too slow. But then weren't you told that a low temperature favors the production of ammonia? And the reason for that is because of Le Chatelier's principle. And if you have that explanation and that's all you have to go with, it's likely you're going to be quite confused. But here's a way to get away from it. We're going to use this diagram, this energy profile diagram here, for an exothermic process. And you should know that it's an exothermic process because you can see that the energy level of the reactants on this side, it's a lot higher than the energy level of the products on this side. So therefore, there is a fall in energy this amount of energy here and then you have this amount of energy here in the products. That extra energy is what's released to the surroundings. That's what gives you the release of heat energy in an exothermic process. Because the system releases to the surroundings, the system loses some of what it has. So that's why you've got the negative sign up here for an exothermic process. Because the system is losing heat to the surroundings. The surroundings gains that heat and that's what we have in an exothermic process. When you increase the temperature, you add heat energy, kinetic energy of motion by increasing the temperature, which is that average kinetic energy of all of the particles. And of course, with this barrier on this side being smaller, a higher percentage of particles will be able to cross the barrier this way. Only a few particles on this side at a low temperature would be able to cross the barrier. And this is the reason why for any exothermic reaction, a low temperature favors the direction that has the lower barrier to overcome. Because if you look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, you realize that in a system, no matter if the temperature is low, some of the particles will still have a fairly high kinetic energy. And those ones here on this side, even though the temperature is low, some of these particles can still make it over this barrier. And the lower the temperature, the more difficult it will be for these particles to get here and over this barrier. And of course, it's not going to make it easier for this with a low temperature. That could be the misconception 
that you would get from just learning Le Chatelier's principle and saying that's the reason for this system behaving this way. At a low temperature, this too has a very low kinetic energy, but it has a smaller barrier. So the low energy situation or the low temperature situation for an exothermic process, it's going to slow down both the forward and the reverse. It lowers the rate of the reaction period, both forward and reverse. But which side is less affected by this low temperature? It's the side that has the lower barrier to cross. And this is the rationale or the reasoning behind why if you have an exothermic process like this one, a low temperature pushes the equilibrium in this direction because molecules from this side would still be able to cross at that low temperature, but it's going to be that much more difficult for those on this side to cross. So in time, there's a huge buildup of this and very little of this left. And then you would get to that point where the forward and the reverse are equal. That's equilibrium. So at equilibrium, at low temperatures, you are going to have a high amount of this, very high amount of this, very little of this. And that's great for the Haber process. If you want it to wait very long to get all of that ammonia, all of that high yield of ammonia, but you can't wait that long. So the high temperature, of course, is a compromise that increases the rate of this. When it does that, of course, it increases the chance of this going over back this way. So now looking at the Haber process in reverse, we'll have an endothermic process going this way because this will become your reactants. That will become your products. The system needs to pull in energy from the outside. That's why delta H is going to have a positive sign going this way. And when you have that, then if the system gets a high temperature, then it gives a chance for this to cross the barrier. High temperatures would kind of cancel out the effect of this energy difference because high temperatures would mean particles would be able to go way over the barrier here. And these would be able to go way over the barrier here when the temperatures are high. What it does is it cancels out the advantage of this side with the low energy barrier. And it makes both sides likely to cross the barrier. But of course, we say it favors this direction because it favors in the sense that if the temperature were low, this side would be disadvantaged. Now that the temperature is high, well, you've removed that disadvantage. So that really is the reason why we say that the reverse reaction is favored by high temperatures. And it's not really that it's favored so much, but that the disadvantage it would have had at low temperatures is now removed.